of history, exploring, encountering, and exchanging, you may think of any number of things, like the Roman Empire or the Pyramids of Giza. But what if I told you that history is being made every day? In fact, you're viewing history right now. The history I'm referring to is the internet. Much like the history of the Earth, humans, and many empires, the internet is constantly evolving. It all started with Nikola Tesla's ideas of a world wireless system in the early 1900s. Although it was a fascinating concept, it never came to fruition in his time. The next concepts came from Paul Outlet and Vannevar Bush. They had visions about a mechanical database of books and information. Eventually, ideas did come to fruition with the famous first inventors to take the internet off paper. The team at ARPANET. They were a section of the government that dealt with the internet and who had been making what they called packet switching, which was a network of little blocks of data being transferred from one place to another in the 1960s. Transporting ourselves to the 70s, ARPANET had found a gold mine in refining the internet to make the so-titled Internet Networking, which was a network containing other networks of data. One of the first internet and or ARPANET connections was between Leonard Kleinrock, Henry Samuels, and Douglas Engelbart. This three-way connection would eventually become our primary source to connect and exchange with friends all across the country. Incredible, right? In 1986, the first links from supercomputers were created and internet service providers emerged. Service providers are still around today, such as a company called CenturyLink. I had recently interviewed the senior engineer at CenturyLink, Bob Stewart. This is what he had to say. My title is Lead Sales Engineer. In particular, my job is to be the expert on a particular set of technologies. CenturyLink is one of the five largest internet service providers in the world. My specific area of responsibility concerns the technologies used to create and manage our internet backbone network, and in particular, our customers' access to the internet. I answer technical questions, conduct training on technology and products, interface with the companies that provide the equipment we use, and spend quite a bit of time with our strategy and development, provisioning and repair teams to keep up with the way our products work. I originally joined US West in 1992 after a 22 year career in the US Air Force managing communication networks. US West was bought by Quest in 2001 and Quest was bought by CenturyLink in 2010. CenturyLink started as CenturyTel, who is a provider of telephone service in rural areas. They expanded by buying a number of similar companies around the country. At the most fundamental level, the internet connects computers and lets them exchange information. Computers, in this sense, include everything from the computers used by business and government to the hundreds of thousands of processors used by Googles to PCs, Macs, and smartphones. CenturyLink offers internet connections to people and businesses using most of the information transfer technologies that exist today from the directly connected optical fiber connections to the DSL used in many homes. CenturyLink has the right to use land next to the Union Pacific Railroad tracks. They use that right to place fiber optic cables that run all over the country, and those cables are the medium that information travels on. In 1995, the internet became fully commercialized and unlocked the potential for the public to explore the internet. This begins the next chapter of our story. Imagine having this giant door fill up in a special closet. It has all your favorite things behind it, but here's the catch. When you open the door, a huge mass of items comes tumbling out and you have to clean all of it up. This was the issue that people encountered when dealing with the massively expanding internet. Enter the era of the search engine. Alan M. Taj was the man who created the first ever search engine named Archie. M. Taj was attending McGill University in Montreal, Canada at the time and worked as a systems administrator for the School of Computer Science. Eventually, his invention of the search engine was a success and within months drew half of Canada's internet traffic. At the time, M. Taj and his collaborators hadn't thought to patent the invention, so he lost the rights to make money off of it. But in a Huffington Post interview, says, quote, I wrote a piece of code that gave birth to a multi-billion dollar industry. I didn't make any money off of it, but I wouldn't change anything. An industry it was, and in 1996, Google wanted to be in on the action. Larry Page and Sergey Brin were working at Stanford on a new search engine, Backrub, which lasted about a year before it took up all the bandwidth at Stanford. They went on to change the name to Google Inc. and were voted for one of the top 100 websites in 1998. They had then become a multi-billion dollar business in the years to follow. That leads us to today. Now more than ever, the internet has become an essential part of living. Google is constantly morphing and changing to fit consumers' needs, and in doing so has created a data bank of people's information. But this leads many to question, is Google taking over our lives? In 
indeed, that Jason Fell at Entrepreneur believes this could be the case. Products like Nest, a smart thermostat, Dropcam, the equivalent of your own personal security camera, and Google Fit are all a little concerning to some people like Jason. The explanation to why some are concerned? The government has started to involve itself in the controversy over spying on personal internet accounts. Some say internet spying is a measure of security, but others are concerned it's a violation of privacy. Nevertheless, today we are able to explore the depths of countless websites, exchange conversation with all sorts of friends on social media, and exchange products with websites like Amazon. But what about the future? Will there be a decline in the number of cute cat videos as the internet crashes? Although we can't know for certain, many have predicted actually that success is on the horizon, and thankfully our supply of adorable kitten entertainment will continue to rise. In Pavel Marcos, the telecom consumer in 2020, one has shown some of the predictions based on the changes in the world now. First, literacy rates, even in third world countries, can and will rapidly expand, giving a new audience to the computer as more people thirst for knowledge on the internet. Many people will become more social and cultural differences could close as well. One could see an increase in peaceful protests as a correlation to the number of protests that are being made public online. Furthermore, wealthier countries will see technology evolve and in doing so will integrate more of their lives to the internet. Some even say that the internet will seemingly blend in with our lives. Moreover, telecom agents will see an increase in revenue from all the new households integrating with technology. And finally, houses themselves will become more integrated with technology wirelessly via the internet. Unfortunately, not everything will improve, and some changes may harm us in the long run. One such change will be the widening gap between those who have internet and those who don't. This could be a main cause for an increase in rebellions and the aforementioned protests in the future. Another controversy is privacy, and more importantly how convenience will be favored against privacy by most citizens, except in the case of the wealthy, who have the privilege of privacy and convenience. Despite these troubling negatives, the internet will continue to grow, and the most important thing to remember is to just relax and enjoy the wonders that the internet has to offer.